What's up, YouTube fans? Today, we're going to take a look at the 3.0 DLX Bumblebee movie, Bumblebee. Now, this is a special gold edition, so the paint has been changed to this shiny metallic gold. It really looks amazing. It pops and uh, really just stands out. But this is a uh, repaint of their original Bumblebee. It did come out a little while ago. So it's new to me. I've never seen it. So we are going to take a look at it here. Um, thanks to Mr. G. Tony for sending this to me for a review. So let's take a quick 360. The amount of detail on this is absolutely stunning. There's so much going on. Um, one thing I really love right here, and I'm already gushing about the figure, so I'm going to try to curb myself, but there's all this car detail. You, know, you can see there's a little pulley here. There's a piston. There's some wiring. I mean, it really looks like he does turn into a Volkswagen Beetle. It's really impressive. There's a lot of little sculpted details. Here's the wheels on the back. They have rubber tires. Uh, maybe they're plastic. Uh, but there's a lot of nice paint detail there. Fully sculpted in detail back here, of course. Here's the tail lights. Turn signals here. I mean, it really is very, very well done. Of course, the magic of this, you need the wings to be Bumblebee. They have two options for that, so you can go with the full-blown doors here, and they're just on a peg here. You stick those into here. It is a very tight tolerance, so I would push here. Don't push on the door. Push on the peg itself, and then these can rotate up and down, and then it actually rotates here as well. So you have kind of two rotation points. The other option is these smaller doors. I have the wrong one there, but um, these can also be used. Now these are just folded downwards on his back. So like when he isn't displaying the doors, you can have them like this. And they just fold down like that on the back. So you have the option. Obviously for me, I think the, the full-blown doors look better. But let me show you both. So there it is with the doors downwards and kind of folded on the back. And you can still sort of mess with them. But basically they sit in that pose. Now these are kind of tough to get off. So you just have to wiggle and work its way off and then maybe you could use a spudger or something to get some separation but they are really tight on there and you know not my figure so I do want to be careful with them but just work those off they're very tight but I prefer this look so I'm gonna put these on I think they just look better with the full-blown doors and I guess in some scenes he had them folded up on his back and other scenes he had them out. So this is accurate either one you use. Just depends what scene you're trying to reproduce. But there you go. You can also fold up and down these ears. So let's go over his articulation since we're already kind of going over that. The doors I showed you has two points of articulation. The head itself is on a ball joint. Go side to side, back to there, down to there. The neck itself, oop, and I turned the eyes on. Didn't want to show you that just yet. But the neck itself goes up and down so you can Move the neck forward all the way down to there. He can look way down. Um, not that much up for a small character. I was surprised. I would have thought they would have given a lot of upward motion on that head, but it's not really a lot. And then the ears, of course, can go up and down here. So you can kind of have them hidden away, or you can have them up. He had different expressions in the movie where the ears interacted. So whatever you prefer. There's a button right here. It isn't a Transformers symbol. It's really cool. It's got a nice Transformers logo for the button. If you press that, actually we'll show you what's inside. There's two AG13 batteries in there in that light unit. So you go ahead and put those batteries in and then you press this button. And you get a nice light up eyes. That really does look awesome. It just looks like he's alive. Now when they're off, it is a little bit lifeless, but Overall, it's not too bad looking. It's got some nice sculpted detail all throughout. The chest piece here can rotate and move out of the way, uh, mainly to help with the articulation, but these can rotate up and down, and then they can pull in and out. So it looks like they're on a ball joint, so they can rotate up. And that's to assist with these shoulders. So the shoulders are on an inner joint here that moves up and down and in and out, so you get a butterfly out of it. But you also get up and down on that. The shoulder itself can move up. Now you're supposed to move this. This is on a double hinge. So you can get that out of the way, which will allow you to take the shoulder and get it all the way up. So you can get some nice movement out of that shoulder. And then you can put this back. 
rotation at the bicep, and again, you can move this out of the way. Rotates about that much, but you get some really nice movement out of that shoulder. We'll put this back down. You have a double jointed elbow, but it's a little bit strange the way it works. So, you know, if you put it like this, his arm is on the back. So you really want it like this, but then these little bits sort of collide. So you want it just out of position to be, so these, otherwise they collide and they hit this. So that's just a point of, you know, be careful. <laughs> you have a double jointed elbow. It does have a little bit of automorphing here on the back, but that's what it looks like. Nice armor plate there, gold colors. Your rotation at the wrist. These wrists go in and out this way and then rotate all the way around. They aren't ball joints, so you can just pop them off the ball joint. Nice metal die cast. A lot of die cast on the case, very, very hefty, but you can swap those out. You have a bunch of hand options. So you can have the open kind of reaching hand, beautifully detailed. And these just pop in and out. Just be careful, hold it in a good spot. But the, the armor can collide there, but it goes in and out. That looks pretty good. We also have an open, you know, wide hand here. So it looks like that. And he does have four fingers instead of five, because he's Bumblebee. And then we have this, which actually isn't, doesn't go on the ball joint. This actually unplugs from here. So if you pull down here on the elbow joint, this will come off. And then you can attach his weapon here. Really beautiful. Look at all this. You got the copper, the kind of the burnt effect here on the end, silver, gold, more silver here, gunmetal. Really well detailed. And this will fit just the exact same way. It's on a little circular peg. Just be careful. And now he can blast some Decepticons with that gun. Beautiful looking gun. Coming down, you have a bunch of movement here in this middle ab, so you can go side to side on that middle ab. You can go uh, back and forth on that. So here's the forward motion. That's what it looks like. And just be careful with these. If I show you the back, you can see this actually has that full cover down piece there. So just like all the other DLX figures, a lot of detail in the back gets exposed when you use that ab crunch. Love that. You have a lower ab crunch right here, so it's in between the crotch and the ab. I haven't really seen a lot of ab crunches there, but you can really get them down because of the two ab crunches. You can get them all the way hunched over like that. And then you have a rotation here at the top ab and a rotation at the bottom ab. So you need a lot of move out of that. For the hips, if you pick this joint on double jointed, it's on a double hinge. You can get this out to the side. It does collide. There's a lot of stuff in here, this little wiring and stuff. So you gotta watch out for that. But you can get out to the side and rotate it back and forward. Just be careful with collision. But you can get it all the way up to there, all the way back to there, and then out to the side. Pretty limited to the side, but you do want to move this out of the way. You have a thigh rotation there. You have a double jointed knee with a ton of the automorphing kind of stuff. So watch this panel here. So that's on a piston there. Really neat. Really neat. So you got a hinge here, hinge here, hinge here. So I triple jointed? I don't know. The way it works is very, very cool. Love that. Love how that looks. The detail underneath, they never spare any expense with the detail. They do a great job. This is very hefty down here. A lot of die cast in that leg. If you lift up this panel here, you have drop down leg joints. If you drop it down too far, you'll just put it all the way out. So it's on this joint here. That's going to fit right back in there. And that'll give you a little bit more movement. So left and right, back and forth, and a rotation. So plenty of articulation on those ankles. And you can get some wide poses, but uh, the, the real limiting factor is these hips. And then you can pull out these ankles and get it a little bit wider stance, but it is really the hips that it limits the overall angle that you can get to the out outside. You do get uh, one more accessory here. 
which is a replacement the head. So this is the battle mask head. It does work the same way you press the button, it lights up. Nice Bumblebee style blue eyes. They do look like the honeycomb style. These have slightly different ears, but they do fold up. So to pull the head off, I'd hold on the side here and then pull that off. It's just on a ball joint. And then you can replace the new one. And there you go with the battle mask look. Pretty neat. He is ready for battle. Now you do get a stand. This is exactly the same stand that we've been getting with these figures. To assemble, you just stick it in here and here. And then this locks in place. So adjust it to where you want it and then lock it in here. You're going to rotate this. Just pull it out. Rotate it to the spot you want. Uh, you have to remove this panel here. And it's on a slider. And you take that out and that reveals that little tab slot. And now you can get this in here. It is a nice firm connection. So you can have a little bit of confidence posing it. But So final thoughts on the 3.0 DLX Bumblebee movie, Gold Edition Bumblebee. Well, let's start with the positives. It looks absolutely phenomenal. I love the paint job and the sculpt detail everywhere. 3.0 never struggles to make good looking bots. This is no exception. I mean, it really is beautiful from any angle, anywhere you look. Uh, just, just so well done. The light up feature on the eyes is really nice. That looks good. Uh, and it's nice that you get the alternate battle mask head. So you can have this with the light up eyes as well. That's really nicely done. I do like the gun uh, and that does look good on there. But negatives wise, I believe, I feel like he should have come with one more accessory. It does feel a little bit limited that they just had the one gun. A lot of these 3.0 DLX figures come with a ton of stuff. This one seems a little bit light in that area uh, as far as accessories go. Um, but the accessories they included are good. They're all beautifully detailed, sculpted, painted, everything. And the hands, they all work. Uh, one other negative is the head doesn't really articulate up that much. So if you want to use this ab crunch and you've got them crunched way down, but you want the head looking upwards, there's not really a good way to do that. Um, just because of the way it's designed, it's kind of hard to get the head up. And you end up also, this helmet comes off very easily. So you have to pull either down here on the sides. And that's a little bit of irritation because I did want for this final pose to crunch the abs but have the head up. But that's really it. That's the only negative I can really think of is that limitation. Other than that, absolutely beautiful figure. Highly recommend it if you have a Bumblebee movie collection or just a movie bot collection. If you're collecting the 3-0, this is a must-have. Of course, Bumblebee. you got to have Bumblebee. Now, whether it's the original colors or this color, don't think it really matters. This one's kind of more shiny and stands out. But either of them are being great for a Bumblebee collection. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.